Hi, thank you for joining us here at FM3 Design. Today, I'd like to really thank Chris for doing the extra work, editing the YouTubes, and helping us. He's been a wonderful help. I'm kind of new to YouTube. Hopefully, we can have an opportunity to learn together. Now, today we're talking about rev nuts. And the rev nut that we're going to look at, we're looking at two, a standard aluminum and a long steel. Now, we use the 5 16th long steel in some of the stuff we manufacture, so that's why we're talking about that one in particular. Some of the things we want to use today are obviously a step drill. Let me show you the step drill. And we picked these up at our local nut and bolt store, and they're a good quality step drill. Um, hold up really, really well. Uh, the little pricey, you're going to spend about 25 bucks, but they do hold up. Drill, yeah, that's extra. The other thing that we're going to talk about today is our use of the tool here that happens to be we purchased at Amazon. It's about 260 bucks, and it's an air-powered tool that sets the rev nuts, does really good. This happens to be an Astro PRN1. So, and we've got a set for the 5 16ths, which is what we typically use it for. We're also going to show today how to use a homemade rev nut tool. I think you're going to find this kind of exciting and interesting. It's easy to use, it's cheap, and if you only need one size or something, it's a lot less expensive than paying 260 bucks for an air powered tool, which you have to have an air compressor and all the just other things that go along with it. So, and this will work on the larger steel rev nuts that we're showing today. So our rev nuts that we're doing are the long shank bulbed 516 steel rev nuts. Large head and the back squishes out really large so that it reinforces the back and doesn't pull out near as easy. The other rev nut we're going to use just for uh, grins is a lighter duty rev nut and they're aluminum. This has a quarter inch, but it's just we didn't have a, a larger one that was handy, so that's what we're using. So when you run into a rev nut and you can't get it to go through the hole, what we do, again, obviously it's not going to go through the hole, I'm going to use the step drill, and this one is going to go to half inch to allow the drill to go in. And that's all it takes to get through it. Yes, it is an aluminum plate, and a lot of what we're doing in the vans is aluminum and steel. Uh, the steel rev nuts against steel gives you a fairly good reinforcement because they do have to carry a lot of weight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our very nice, powerful rev nut tool, put the rev nut on the end of it, spin it down towards stops, and I'm going to put it in the hole, pull the trigger, and then wind it up so I get one more shot at it because it didn't pull it far enough the first time. And that pulls it far enough to make the rev nut go up, at the, up against the back of the material and squish up against the material and the back of the tool to, or the back of the rev nut to hold it. As you can see, the rev nut has flattened up against it a lot of surface there. And the surface has to do with the fact that that's what holds the rev nut in place. The front just simply is there for the front, but the back's there for the back. So now, I'm going to take our next tool that we have, which happens to be the manual tool. And by the way, the manual tool, you can order these sets. And I think I got this set at MSC Direct, but I'm sure Amazon has them too. So I'm going to take the tool, and I'm going to spin the revenant on the tool. Again, it's got threads on the inside. Put it in the hole, made the hole the right size first time. I'm going to crush it down my hand and get it going. So it takes both hands to get it going. Crush it as far as it'll go, like that. And then spin it off. So now, I'll show you that rev nut. Notice the aluminum rev nut actually has a shallower, less of a shank on it than what the steel rev nut does. Again, the steel is longer. That's why I had to do pull two, two pulls to the trigger and that. So now what I want to do is show you how to use the manual tool that we send out with our kits.
Now, this is for 516. You have a external lock washer. You have a nut that's used for putting two all thread rods together. This happens to be 3 eighths of an inch. You got a long 516 all thread bolt threaded to clear the head. And then you use a washer on it that lets it spin against the nut. Now the, all thre the uh, lock washer holds the head of the revenant in place while you're tightening it up. Now, if you don't have to do a lot of rev nuts and don't have air compressor and stuff, and you happen to be in the field, this happens to work real well. You just screw the rev nut on the uh, homemade tool. Put it in the hole. I'm going to use a crescent wrench and a ratchet. And I'm going to ratchet it together. And it's crushing the back of the rev nut. The bolt's going through, pulling it up. And I'll end up with the same looking end effect as what you'd have having used the power tool. Although if I was, had to do 100 of them in a row, I'd have the power tool. Okay. Got that, and I'll take it loose now. So this little homemade tool, well, about a buck at the hard or at the nut and bolt store. So you could have quite a few sizes of RevNet tools, pretty cheap. Although if you're doing lots of them, our tools are a lot nicer. The manual tool, again, more for aluminum and smaller. I doubt, I doubt you're going to pull the 516 with this. They do make larger manual ones for that. They're typically anywhere from 100 to 180 bucks. So hopefully this is informative and you had enjoyed this. And we thank you for your time. And again, thanks, Chris, for your help.